we are on, we are on okay. In this video, I will briefly explain how I did multi-level, multiple imputation with Blimp software, which is right here. Yes. First of all, I needed to prepare the files and I did all, I prepared all of them on R. So those are my files, as you can see here. These are the school level variables. For example, let's see what this one is. Yes, this is, those, just, these are pre-prepared. So I have the school IDs. I have this public information, public one or zero. I have teacher shortage and student teacher ratio. Those are the variables that I used for my school level as my school level data set. What about my student level? On my student level data set, let's see for the 2003 data set, I have again the school ID, which I need for merging data. I have the student ID. I have female one or zero. Language at home with the same with the test language one or zero. Parent education, cultural position, address, compass, and the last one is the plausible value math scores. Now, the first thing is reading this data set. So I already prepared those that you can also prepare it by yourself later. First of all, I need to merge these two data files by their school IDs. Once I run this code, the new data set, I have the school IDs here, goes 1111, as you can see, similar to this one. But now I have their public school information, teacher shortage, and student teacher ratio. And then this is the, the starts from here, the level one variables. These are the level two school level variables, school IDs, then these three are the school level variables. I tried to do multiple imputation through mice package, which I first ran this uh, empty max duration zero, empty R and empty mice, and then got my uh, methods and then called the different methods like two level PMM and made PMM, then played around with random and fixed effects, and then I change the predictor matrix, I change the method, then when I start try to run, I get some errors, which will come in a second. It is, this gave me a lot of problems, even though I was by, by, uh, by playing around, it, by changing the method, by playing around with the fixed and random effects, which is kind of dangerous, uh, I was able to run the analysis without an error, but with too many warnings. After I received those data set, I found some issues such as, let me show you what those issues are. Let's say, I uh, will open this one. This is the one that I imputed. So I'm going down. As you can see, this is the school level variable, but every student has slightly different value. This doesn't make any sense. Those are all should be the same. Okay, those, these are not very different, but still, there should not be any difference because these are in the same school. These are the same, uh, these students are from the same school. So they ha should, they have to have the same value, exactly same value. So this didn't give me results, even though uh, I was able to run analysis, as you can see now, it gave me error. And even if I was able to run without an error, it, too many warnings. I still got this issue. And it's, as you can see, I couldn't even finish the first iteration, nothing. It's just extremely slow. So I just say stop. Stop, I don't wanna deal with you anymore. And what I do is, I go for Blimp software, which is a lifesaver for me, for this uh, particular case. Okay, for this one, I jump through down those because those are all my uh, codes. So I start my blimp trial from here. So what I do is, as you remember, I prepared this data by saying merge. And 
there is one thing that you should be careful about. Blimp doesn't read an A, which is a missing value for R. So you have to change missing values, this code, to 999 or something numeric without any space. Uh, just sign something, just some number. Just give some them, them a number that you don't have it in your data set. Then, say right table. You will see why I say right table here. And you should uh, leave this row names. I mean, keep this row names false. In default, those are true. Call names false because we don't want any col column names or row names. This package, this Blink software is kind of like M plus, uh, similar to M plus. So we just want clean data set only with numbers and say right table and you don't need to worry about it. Uh, this function will be read by the blimp software. Let's see what we will have. So this is my blimp files in the blimp files. What is the name of this file I saved? I say before I am PCSV. So before I am PCSV, uh, okay, this is not the one that I was looking for. Okay, so because I probably saved here. Okay, yes, I saved here. Now I will run it for you. And so let's open this file. As you can see, it's uh, that they are in the same role. It's like bunch of looks like bunch of garbage. And we have, let's see, 999. You can see that there are 999 values. And yeah, this is problem. This is problematic. Let's go to Blimp software. What I do for Blimp. This is my syntax for Blimp. So if your so the file name should be INP should be this uh, little file. If you don't have anything, if you are using, like if you're a Mac user, if you don't know how to make this INP file, I would definitely recommend to use Sublime, Sublime text. It's kind of easy. So, and here, let's go to 2003. So data, you should show your data. If your INP and the data is in the same place, you don't need to show any other uh, location it's very simple and then you have to say the name of the variables because you don't have the column names remember and you have to put the column names here so these are my column names school ID public teacher shortage it goes on and this is very important you should say which variable is ordinal you can you can identify that and you also have to say which variable is nominal and then you have to say you don't you don't need to say which one is continuous because the rest is continuous it will find it and you you need to say missing which value you put for missing i put 999 and it's here and what is your class id this is my class id afterwards there's a fcs fcs function that i prefer this is fully chain specification comes with uh, step von Brun which is actually mice. I prefer to use this one instead of joint modeling because I don't want to determine a model and then do my imputation by that joint modeling. But if you instead of this one, if you write model and then you can write your model here, there are a lot of information uh, on the Blimp website and you can find it. I'll, I'll also show it to you, the manual too. Uh, I... I like FCS. I don't want to determine any model. My model could be wrong. So I just want the FCS to do all, all the models and run everything for each of them. Here, I don't pick only the variables with missing. I pick all the variables which I want to be used in multiple imputation. So I want to use, I want to be used public teacher shortage, ratio, uh, student-teacher ratio, female, all of them, but not the student ID. 
I didn't put it to the 90 here because this is, uh, I'm not going to use it in my model, in my regression, in my fully chained specification. Then give it to a seed number, give the number of imputation, burn. How many iterations do you want? This is this is what I got from here, but let's check the manual and see if you have any question. I will I need to show you how to find the manual actually. This is kind of tricky. Write the blimp user guide and on R because I couldn't find blimp user guide here in uh, Craig Anders website. Uh, he made this blimp software, which is genius. It's an amazing software. Maybe I don't know how to find it. It says once you come here and click on the Blimp software, you can download it for Mac and also Windows. It's super fast. It's super good. It gives you a lot of information. I don't know. I couldn't see whether uh, his uh, guideline here, but if you write on Google, you'll find it. Blimp user guide. And be careful. There is one in 2017 and there is one in 2019. You want the one with 2019. Be careful about this one because you will see once you open this uh, manual, you will see, and let's go back while this is opening. So this is Blimp 2.1. I want Blimp 2, Blimp 2.1. No, I don't want the old version. A version, Blimp, Blimp 2.1. This is the correct version. This is the correct user guide. They are great people. They I don't know them in person, but they keep. Uh, okay, now I need to go back. They keep updating their software. They put new features in their software, so it's good to be uh, able to have the same version on the user guide as well as the same version on this uh, Blimp Studio. Okay, so. It's very easy to read, easy to understand, and very good examples. Use with very good examples. User guide. I definitely suggest you to check this out before you start writing any of the codes. So it talks about fully specification, fully conditional specification here. Base. It just simply talks about it. it. This one is like a quick example, and then it talks about the comments which comment means what what i was trying to show you is burn comment yes burn comment is set to that meaning that 2000 iterations are performed prior to saving the first imputed data set so uh, you can determine this number 1000 you can determine this number 10,000 or whatever you want and also teen comments specify the number of iterations between each saved data set so those are the, this, this information comes from here and NIMPS is the number of iteration, number of imputations and chains, how many processors this computer to be used. I just, it was four, I just kept it four, but it depends on your computer. You can go up or down. Option PSR, I don't really remember what PSR means, but you can definitely find it. Options specified, various miscellaneous options such as prior distribution for variance components and the method for modeling between cluster association model. So you can check this for yourself and find out the best options. So now it says, for example, options latent here. And then uh, it's on the save part for R, uh, you just say stacked. And this example is coming from actually from the this user guide, I just, put my own example here and uh, you can you don't have to make this hundred thousand you can just make it hundred or you can make it very little but once you get the results so this is the results section I'm not going to run it right now but you can I, I will run it but it's gonna take a little while maybe like 15 minutes because my data set is 5600 or something my, uh, students i have five thousand yeah around five thousand students so it's actually here sorry five thousand four hundred fifty seven students two hundred seventy five schools so this is a huge data set if you try to do this with mice there is no way that you can do it like probably in your lifetime <laughs> i can't say that that would take years to run that many iterations but this 
just completely amazing it runs in about 15 minutes it's or i don't know maybe 30 minutes here i'm not sure but it's amazingly fast if you look at the number of burners one thing that you need to look at it potential scale reduction output so how many burn do you need just check here this number is supposed to go down to 1.10 oh i think this is 1.10 and it's supposed to be in this manual if you find a different number it's you can go with that number but what i try to do is get as close to as possible to one and stabilize your imputations so as you can see it's going down to one it just goes up again down again up again down again and finally finally it goes almost one it's very close to one which means that our imputation model is very good and this blimp software gives you a bunch of graphs that you may use you may check for diagnostics and you can save your easily save your plot so it's now uh, we have this little rainbow because uh, i'm saving the screen recording and trying to open up this huge this giant uh, graph here so it gets a little bit slow i hope it helps this will definitely help me in the future because most likely I will forget how I ran this analysis. And I hope it helps all of us. And you should definitely save your output from here. And you should you can save your graphs from here. And if you want graphs to be shown, you need to click in this one. Uh, you can click it right now. But yeah, I need to click in this one. And you can also save from here, little bottom on the third button. I hope it helps. Thank you very much for watching.